If you're a current Workgroup PDM user, you can expect some differences in how you use PDM standard. While both systems are available to customers who own SOLIDWORKS Professional and SOLIDWORKS Premium, and both systems provide a means for auditing design history, the similarities more or less end there. PDM Standard uses Windows Explorer, not SOLIDWORKS Explorer and not the PDM Task Pane add-in inside of SOLIDWORKS as its primary interface. You will browse to, open, save, copy, paste, etc, etc, etc through Windows Explorer and normal file open or file save as dialog boxes just as you would for any other file types that you work with day in and day out. Versions and revisions are also treated differently. In Workgroup PDM, every file iteration is considered a revision, and as a result, you may have a revision schema that has one, two, or potentially three different components with an optional working version designation on top of that. And it's up to the user to increment the correct component. In PDM standard, we decouple versions and revisions. A version is something that gets created on each check-in if the file has changed, whereas a revision is basically a label applied by the workflow to the particular file version that you are releasing. Finally, we do away with two concepts that are unique to Workgroup PDM, working directory and file ownership. The Workgroup PDM concept of working directory no longer exists in PDM standard. While files are still cached locally when accessed by the client, they're not flattened into a single folder outside of the Vault environment. Files are checked out and are cached in the folder structure displayed in Windows Explorer. This cuts down considerably in confusion, reference issues, and users trying to work around the Vault. When you check in a file, it's checked into the folder that it was saved in. Users don't need to select the project on initial check-in. In PDM standard, file ownership is tied strictly to the checkout status. Simply put, if a file is checked out, it is quote-unquote owned by that user, and if the file is checked in, it is owned by no one and available for read-only access. Speaking of permissions, let's take a bit of a peek under the covers. Architecturally, Workgroup PDM and PDM standard are completely different. Whereas Workgroup PDM is a flat folder-based system using text files to manage file references and metadata, PDM Standard uses a Microsoft SQL Express database backend along with a hexadecimal folder structure for file hashing that delivers better and more reliable performance as datasets continue to grow. It shares this architecture with its big brother, PDM Professional, making a straightforward upgrade path when appropriate. The permissions themselves are very granular, especially as compared to Workgroup PDM. For example, I can assign folder permissions in Workgroup PDM as follows. Read only, read write, or no access. That's it. In PDM standard, we have specific control over who can see, who can edit, who can move, who can delete, who can destroy, who can see bombs, and the list goes on. Another prime example, creating folders. This is a permission in PDM standard done through the user interface, not something that has to be done through the administration tool. Once set up, the day-to-day -day administrative overhead of PDM standard is significantly lower than that of Workgroup PDM. Finally, for those of you who can't seem to get by with out-of-the-box functionality, there is no API access available in SOLIDWORKS PDM standard. Similarly, if you own the Workgroup PDM advanced server, providing web portal access that is also not available in PDM standard. You would need to go to SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional for web and or API access. A product matrix is available in the file section of this course which highlights the key differences between Workgroup PDM, PDM Standard, and PDM Professional.